but a longtime friend of Dale Plank. Um, can I jump? Steve Williams. There we go. I did have it down on paper. Steve, are you are going to induct your good friend and, uh, and as, as I said, one talented driver. I'll turn it over to you to induct our next inductee, Dale Plank. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, quite humbled to be here today. I met Dale's dad in 1975, and it was shortly thereafter I finally met Dale. He was about five years old. And I became real good friends with the family and started working on Denny's race cars. Dale loved to come to the garage when he could and hang out and climb in the race cars. And he brought his box of matchbox cars and he'd go out in the, the office of the used car lot and set up his own little race tracks and race the cars around. And as time passed, his mom started taking him to the races and he took him with him and he'd set his own little race tracks up on the bleachers, not paying a lot of attention to what his dad was doing on the racetrack. But as time passed, he got more interested in what was going on, and he had more questions to his dad about, about racing. And finally, then he decided that, you know, maybe, maybe we can get him started. Didn't want to do mic rods. Maybe we'll start him in go-karts. So he picked up an old dart cart, a bunch of pieces, and he, he told Dale from the get-go, he was still pretty young, if you're going to race, you're going to work on it yourself along with us, and you're going to figure it all out. You know, if you can't help, you're not going to get to do it. So we got, he got the cart together, and we both were going to drive it a little bit. Well, it didn't turn out to be too much of a cart, and every time we go somewhere, we broke something. But, but his dad saw potential, so his dad bought some better equipment and got pretty deep into the karting, and as time passed, Dale became a big champion in go-karts. I think the final year he raced, the last couple of years, he wanted to race the open class at Paradise, and here he is, 15 or so years old, and he's out there whipping the adults because the open class was adults. And he was putting the whipping on them, and it was kind of cool because he got paid to win in that class. There was money. So he quite liked that. Well, over time, racing with Benny, he had bought and sold different cars. He had a four-cylinder modified then. But he decided that it was time for him to back out if Dale was going to continue. So he sold it. Well, when Dale's getting towards the end of his career, he thought, you know, Dad, I'd, I kind of like to try the four-cylinder stuff. Well, his dad told him, you can look, if we can find a car, you got some money saved, you, you're going to buy it. And he did. Well, put rustled parts together, got the car going. Again, we were both going to drive it a little bit. Well, they didn't turn out too well. But his dad decided that, you know, I think we need something better. So he ended up buying a wrecked, Lindblad Asphalt Mini out of New England states. And Donnie Bushbacker Jr. put a front clip on it, and we put it in the shop, and we all dug in and turned it into a dirt car with pretty good success. We did have some mechanical failures under the hood occasionally, but when we didn't, Dale was out front. Dundee, five mile, went to Penn Can, went to Devil's Bowl, raced it around quite a bit. In the meantime, Dad decided, well, I'm going to buy... I'm going to buy modified. So he finds Corky Stockham had a car left over from the auction. So we bought it. So we pieced it together. So on a given night at Dundee, he'd raced both cars. Not any great success initially, but got better as time. And his dad says, well, we're going to buy a brand new Olsen car. So we buy a brand new 1988 Olsen car. Put that together. Things are starting to come around again. Bought an 89 car. One night, Fulton, he won the feature, and that was the start of it all. The wins didn't come easy, but more wins came as time passed. Then it was time, you know, we got to do better. We're going to get a Troyer mud bus. So we bought the first mud bus, and we thought, well, you know, we'll just put it together. We still had an Olsen car. We'll go race Dundee. Use that there. Well, it worked so good the first night, we took it to Fulton. And out of the box, it was wicked fast. And in no time, the wind started to rack up. Well, that was the start of the NASCAR Regional Series, of which Dale won it, the, the region, three years in a row. The fourth year, he finished second. But there was many wins, upwards of 20 each year. In between that, after the first banquet in 94, he had to pick himself up after the banquet that night and load himself in the car and drive to Charlotte, North Carolina 
because he was going to participate in the Richard Petty Driving School like within a day or so, which turned out to be a big boost for him. He ended up turning the fast time in his, his class. He had the fastest speeds in his class. He wanted to go faster, but the, the instructor said, you got to follow me. You can't pull out of line. you got to stay behind me, which he did, but he wanted to go faster. So that kind of led to being contacted about driving an asphalt car, a late model style car, is Spencer Speedway, which he did for a whole season with pretty darn good success. It really, it really worked, you know. And of course, in, back in that time in 94, he won the Victoria 200, which was a great honor. And as the, as the outlaw circuit went away, though, he still continued, with, he ran in Fulton and Utica and wherever, wherever the, they took him, he liked to race. And he became better and better and better. In 97 or so, I was deciding I'd done this long enough, it was time for me to back away a little bit. But I never was going to not know what's going on. And he ventured out on his own, and then he went from his own to driving for some other drivers, big blocks, small blocks. He dabbled a little bit in late models. He got in a sprint car. He drove Speedster. So he got pretty diverse with a great career. But time caught up to him, and he says, I'm getting a little tired, and my body's getting a little beat up. And, you know, I'm thinking it's maybe time to start backing away. Well, he always kind of had an interest in helping the young new drivers. So he started kind of, he'd be known as the coach, whether it be driving, chassis setups, weekly maintenance. And he started doing that, which he really enjoyed, not really missing the driver's seat all that much. Now today he still does that, and working alongside his son Brandon with, with Dig Race products. Those guys work their tail off seven days a week this time of year. They could be there from, Eight, nine in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, building shacks, setting up chassis. Weekend comes, traveling off to who knows where to help, help guys at the tracks. And I'm really proud to be standing here. And Dale, you are the next inductee into the Hall of Fame. Thank you, Steve. Dale Plank, our next inductee. Come on up, Dale as he's going to make his way up here. We'll get a few words with him after he uh, gets presented the plaque and the jacket. Again, want to thank Boomer's Performance for the uh, jackets for their Hall of Famers. As he'll get presented the plaque, our NISCA president, Rick Hodge and Brian Bedell from Boomer's Performance. And the second of our three drivers inducted, Dale Plank. And Dale, uh, probably one of the coolest nicknames that, uh, that we've had in racing, the natural. Of course, your dad, Denny, a very accomplished racer. Um, you know, Steve just talked about racing at Devil's Bowl. I raced against you in 1984, that was, uh, up at Devil's Bowl in the Mini. It was, uh, hey, that's Denny Plank's kid. I hesitate to use the word I raced with you. It was more like chased with you. But um, it, uh, your career, uh, so diverse, uh, as Steve just documented. And, uh, Steve did a great job with no notes. I, I, he's got my admiration. <laughs> he knows you well, that's for sure. Um, reflect a little bit uh, on some of the racing, some of the memories. Uh, one of the things that Shane talked about um, when he was talking to Mitch about his favorite win or his favorite memory um, you've got some pretty big trophies at home uh, with the NASCAR championships and what have you, the track championships. Uh, you had a lot of great results, but do uh, you have a favorite? I got a bunch. All the first wins, um, obviously the Victoria 200 was, was huge. Um, NASCAR championships, which that, that, was, that was pretty unique because we were, I was going to run Fulton, the Utica Rome anyway, and then NASCAR sanctioning came in, and I think we were all at the 
at the initial meeting, and you were there too, Mitch, and they said NASCAR is coming in, and they showed us this guy that won the region, and I think we were all like, well, no, <laughs> none of us are ever going to do any of that. So that, that was pretty cool to be able at that point to put a bunch of wins together for a few years and, and actually get that. Yeah, when you get to go to the NASCAR banquet and you get the trophy that's taller than you are with a big paycheck to go with it, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was super cool, you know, um, racing two two nights a week, an hour away from home for for that kind of money and, and prestige was very special. Now the deal with Brandon, uh, and, uh, and, and Steve documented that pretty well. Uh, you're passing along your knowledge. Obviously, uh, Brandon got some of that knowledge genetically, but uh, you guys work in to help others. Um, I know from me being at Albany, Saratoga every Friday night over the years, you've been up there for a number of years uh, uh, helping some of the guys on a local level. And uh, yes, it's a business, but it's also a lifestyle. Yeah, it's definitely a lifestyle. Um, I, I always raced kind of for a living, so I kind of needed to do something to stay in racing. So um, the consulting side, you know, I, I definitely remember when I was first getting started and I didn't have a lot of people to lean on, had to figure a lot of stuff out on my own. So being able to, to work with, you know, multiple, pretty much, just about hundreds of drivers now, I think, pretty much. Um, is, is super cool because I was in their place once, you know, guys that were just getting started that, that need to really figure everything out all the way to guys that are experienced and, and just need kind of an outside look in at their operation and see if we can make it better. And um, that it's, it's very fulfilling. And, you know, when, when somebody I help wins, I kind of feel like a little victory for myself. So that's pretty cool. And it's all part of the threads that makes up a Hall of Famer. It's uh, obviously, uh, it's not all accomplished behind the wheel. It's what you bring to the table and what you've, you're going to have your legacy in the sports and in the sport itself. And uh, you've done a great job. Um, I can say I've uh, witnessed many, many of your wins and I've seen some great racing. We talked to one of your biggest competitors right here, but um, uh, through the years, uh, some of the some of the guys that you uh, you, th you think back and the biggest battles that you had, pretty much with Mitch, is <laughs> <laughs> the ones that really come to mind. But they were they were some of the best battles because I don't I don't think we ever wrecked each other once. Like it was never, you know, if if he was better that night, he was going to win. If I was better that night, I was going to win. And that's how I remembered it. That's how I said it to Mitch. Uh, you guys were the hardest, cleanest racers together. And uh, how you do that in the fields that you raced against and on the speedways you raced against, um, that tr shows the true uh, Hall of Fame capabilities that you had. All in all, it's been great to have you here with us and, and your family. Welcome to the NISCA Hall of Fame. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, and everybody that I didn't think I would ever get <laughs> nominated for this thing, so I appreciate everything everybody does, and this deal is really cool. I was always a NISCA member my, my whole time, and um, it's, it's just great, and I appreciate all my family and friends coming as well. Well deserved. Ladies and gentlemen, our most recent inductee, the natural Dale Plank. how I got the name natural because I was terrible when I started. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's naturally.